All right, what's going on guys? It's your boy scrub here back again with another video Hope you guys are having yourselves a great day I know I am and today I wanted to talk about this insane article I saw in the Washington Post talking about how the military and the Pentagon is starting to have internal discussions about whether or not they should embrace gaming because they're questioning if gamers make good soldiers Inside the Pentagon's long debate, do gamers make good soldiers? Uh, either way, I just felt like talking about it because I thought it was a very, very interesting article to see. As you know, gamers do in fact make the best soldiers because all of us have been to war multiple times for each Call of Duty. Uh, that's obviously a joke. I don't really understand why this was written into an article, but either way, let's get into it and talk about it. In May, the U.S. military created a new rivalry in a seven-hour Twitch stream. Soldiers from the Air Force and Army fought on an unlikely battlefield, Halo Infinite. A popular first-person shooter video game, over half a million people logged on to watch the Air Force win the military's first-ever inter-service gaming championship. At the event in San Antonio, the competition and camaraderie was celebrated, but as military leaders have begun to embrace gaming, it has come with controversy. For years, gaming in the military was simply a soldier hobby, but now it's transforming into a strategic, well-calculated initiative many see as a means to recruit, retain, and train America's fighting force. Alright, I know that there's probably a lot of people in the military that play video games. I have a, a lot of family members that were in the service at one point or another, and they played a ton of video games, still do. In their off time, obviously, like, not when they're working. So I can understand why the military would maybe make some teams for each division to, uh, help the soldiers have a little bit of fun rivalry, boost morale. But I don't necessarily agree with the second part of that, which is like, this is some very well thought out strategic mindset to recruit people. Only because, and maybe I'm wrong, I hope people aren't this dumb, I'm hoping people aren't tuning in to one stream of the Air Force and the Army playing Halo and being like, hey, I should definitely join now. I hope, for the sake of the United States, that the people joining the military are thinking about it a little bit more deeply than, oh, they play video games, so therefore it's super sick and I 100% need to join. I understand that the avenue they're talking about is probably more like it opens people's idea to it, it paints the military in a better light, but that being said, soldiers do play quite a lot of video games. I mean, think about the demographic of most of the military. People in between the ages of like 18 to 25, uh, that's a pretty prime demographic when it comes to gaming. I do believe that naturally soldiers' interest in gaming activities has gone up as just it's gotten more popular, so I can understand why they might want to embrace it instead of fighting it, because it's kind of like a, a fight that you're not going to win. If the soldiers are, like, banned from playing video games, it's not actually going to change anything. You might as well lean into it, let the soldiers have a boost of morale, and stay on top of their training, then fight a battle with technology. Senior Pentagon officials are becoming more accepting of gaming, facing recruiting challenges, and a talent pool that grew up with iPads and video game controllers. Each brand of the military now fields an eSports team, and military sponsorships of gaming leagues are on the rise and service members can easily flock to military-created Discord channels and chat with thousands of others about their love of video games like Call of Duty and Halo. I didn't realize that the military had an official Discord server. Does that mean that it's somebody's job in the military to be the admin for the military Discord server? Somewhere out there, you're telling me there's a possibility that there's the highest-ranking Discord admin in the armed forces. I'm not saying I wouldn't respect them because they did join the military. Thank you for, like, like, you know, serving the country, but that being said, it would be hilarious if everyone's sitting around swapping war stories in the lunchroom or something, one guy's like talking about his ninth deployment. Yeah, one time some kids got pretty rowdy in the Discord server, had to drop the ban hammer on him. Imagine he has to give reports to, like, generals every day about what's been happening in the Discord server. Sir, at about 1600 hours, sir, there was a huge fight in the Discord server. People were sending memes like crazy. We were able to put it into slow mode and contain it, thankfully. But some leaders are skeptical of gaming, arguing it weakens new recruits so they wash out of basic training. Moreover, the military has received fierce criticism from gaming experts and lawmakers for using gaming channels and influencers to subtly recruit young 
younger audiences. It's a fine line, said Amy J. Nelson, a foreign policy fellow at the Brookings Institute, embracing the culture and the generation where they're at now and using that as leverage on the battlefield, but it's not something to exploit in recruitment. I guess the best way they could use this for recruitment is, like I said, just kind of softening people's image of the military. Um, which, I mean, I, they've done this in different ways forever. They had a video game in the early 2000s. But maybe this is optimistic thinking. I would hope that the average American would think a little bit more about joining the military other than being like, bro, that dude in the army is gnarly at Fortnite. I gotta go sign up right now. Because I don't think those are the type of people that we really want defending the country. Their service would be appreciated, but I would prefer to have people that are like a little bit more focused on serving the country and have honor about wanting to protect the nation, rather than just people that saw some sick Fortnite clips on TikTok and signed up, and I don't think that's going to happen. I like to believe that people would think more about it, and on top of it, I don't think people are that dumb, you know? I, I really don't, hopefully. And I even think like the military is saying, it's not their goal to get everyone that plays video games to join. It's just, I think, a good way to get a little bit of outreach, soften people's images of the military, and a lot of soldiers do be gaming. The military has a long history with gaming. In the early 2000s, the Department of Defense poured millions of dollars into creating a shooting video game called America's Army that allowed people to pretend they were soldiers, fight missions, and explore aspects of military life. The game became a hit with millions playing it, and research commissioned by MIT in 2008 showed roughly 30% of all Americans aged 16 to 24 had a more favorable view of the military because of it. I mean, I knew they made a video game, but I didn't realize it got that popping that 30% of the population was like, nah, they're way cooler because they made a video game. I didn't realize that that was the statistic. For some reason, I had thought that America's army ended up being shut off because there was a lack of players. That might have just been because of age. I'm not really insanely familiar with the situation. But uh, regardless, it just goes to show that they've been down this avenue before. It's not like this is the first time they've ever joined gaming. And uh, I don't know how this works. This is a long shot. Like, this is definitely some random rambling, all right? There's a reason the description says semi-coherent rambling. Low-key, would people that are cracked at Xbox be way better at flying drones? I know they use the Xbox controller for quite a few things in the military because people were familiar with it and they were a lot cheaper. But, like, okay, if somebody's really cracked at building on controller in Fortnite, are they going to be the sickest drone pilot ever? Probably not. I'm sure it's very different, but I'm just talking out my butt here. At the same time, the military was relying on technology to shape its future. Augmented reality, artificial intelligence, and automated and unmanned weaponry called for recruits with increasingly technical skill sets. In February, the Office of Naval Research unveiled a study showing that playing first-person shooting games could actually create a better fighter. Playing those games, research researchers said could improve cognitive processing, peripheral vision, and the ability to learn tasks better. People who play video games are quicker at processing information, said Ray Perez, a program officer in the Naval Researchers Warfighter Performance Department. Ten hours of video games can change the structure and organization of a person's brain. All right, I get what they're saying. Obviously, if you're constantly playing games where you're going to have to solve problems, you would slowly get better at problem solving. But I don't really know how to feel about that last sentence, that ten hours of gaming can change the structure of a brain. In that case, dude, my brain's got to be uh, pretty fried. I don't know. I do get where they're coming from, too. As we become more and more reliant on technology, you need people more and more familiar with it. And as cringe as it sounds, there is something to be said for people that are very into video games being able to adapt to different systems very easily. For example, if you're like an Xbox guy, it might take you a little bit to pick up a PlayStation, but you could pick it up relatively quickly. And I think the same thing could be said for like once you've switched operating systems, systems a couple times. Trying something new technology-wise isn't scary, so if you do have to do something technologically in the military, it's a lot less intimidating because you have that experience. Even if it's going to be a different operating system, even if it is going to be slightly different, if they have experience with technology, it's obviously better than no experience with technology. And we are going to become more reliant upon it. It doesn't really matter. You can fight it as much as you want. It is going to happen. In terms of technology becoming more and more integrated with the military, it's just the future. Despite that, others in the military have frowned upon gaming culture. In February, Army Major John Mark Theobo 
Thibodeau, sorry, chief medical of readiness at Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri, decried video games as a reason for why young recruits are physically unfit for the military. The Nintendo generation, soldier skeleton, is not toughened by activity prior to arrival, he said in a statement, so some of them break more easily. The Defense Department later removed his remarks from the statement. Captain Oliver Parsons, an Air Force officer and founder of Air Force Gaming, said that soldiers benefit from gaming initiatives becoming more formalized, and according to a study of 35,000 Air men, 86% of ages 18 to 34 identified as gamers. I don't think gaming itself is the reason that recruits aren't able to pass boot camp. I mean, if you're one of the gamers that literally has never done anything in your entire life other than play video games, then yeah, your body probably isn't well adjusted to basic training. But if you're a normal person that has a few hobbies outside of gaming, I don't think that if it's something you do on the side, it's magically gonna destroy your bone structure. Everything was fine until I played COD and I got bone spurs. As for that last statistic, it's kind of what I was saying earlier. I think this might be a byproduct of how many people in the military play video games. Ages 18 to 34, 86% of them identify as gamers. At that point, not only do you get the benefit of people looking more fondly upon the military for playing video games, but also 90% of your soldiers now have an outlet for something that they do anyways and they start to associate that activity with their service, you can understand why the military might be like, oh, it might not be a bad idea to support something 86% of our soldiers are doing. Overall, I don't think gaming would necessarily make you some type of super soldier. Like, people are delusional if they think that their CSGO experience would actually somehow make them better in, in a wartime situation. The U.S. military military goes through tons of training. Uh, I feel like if you can get through boot camp and get through the training, whether or not you're playing video games doesn't really matter. You'll probably be way more trained than you ever would be through just gaming. That's ridiculous. But it is interesting to see that even the military is starting to lean into it, and especially when it comes to future unmanned systems, technologically based stuff. I could see how like having prior experience with technology, whether that be through gaming, computer support, or whatever, would make you a little bit faster at being able to learn those weapon systems. So that's cool, I guess, but I don't know. It's interesting to see gaming starting to be brought up in like serious context. Should the military be recruiting gamers? Do they make better soldiers? Like for a long time, I don't know. It didn't feel like people cared about gaming that much. But yeah, it's a huge part of most people's like downtime, I would say, of this generation. Like they said, the iPad kid. And like it or not, more people are going to keep gaming. So uh, it'll be weird to see how this shakes out. Anyways, guys, I think that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate y'all taking a second to press the like button. Comment down below. And if you like videos like this, subscribe and turn on notifications. I try to post two videos every day. So subscribe and turn on noties if you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, on that note, don't get anyone pregnant. If you do make sure they're hot, I'm out. Peace.